Good day and welcome to another lecture series on amino acid peptides and proteins. Today we'll be looking at, you know, we're working with proteins. Why do we need to work with proteins? So, so one may ask, why do you need to prepare a protein? So we can actually, we want to prepare a protein in order to understand the structure and the function of that protein. If we know the structure of the protein, we can predict the function of that protein and actually merge them with other proteins or biological functions. So, yeah, we look at if you have a cell extract, if you have a cell extract, we have uh, a kind of, uh, for example, a single cell contains several proteins, several proteins. Well, we might be interested in the particular proteins. And remind, mind you, some of these proteins are compartmentalized within the particular organelle in the cell. So, for example, if you're interested in the electron transport chain proteins, we have to look for the mitochondria. If you are looking for nuclear proteins, we have to look at the nucleus. So, for me to actually extract a protein, we must be able to know the location of that protein for us to purify the protein. Now, separation of this protein relies majorly on the physical and chemical differences, which ranges from the charge of the protein, the size of the protein, the affinity of the protein for a ligand. For example, if it's an enzyme, if it's an enzyme, we will talk about the enzyme must be will have an affinity to a particular substrate. For example, hexokinase have affinity for glucose. Uh, we also have several enzymes that have affinity for several uh, other molecules. So we will also look at solubility. You know, the, the, the ability of the protein to solubilize in a particular type of solution. We also look at the hydrophobicity and the thermal stability. How stable the protein is in temperature or how does temperature affect the protein tertiary or quaternary structure. So chromatography is actually commonly used for preparation or preparative separation in which the protein is often able to okay able to remain in its native folded states. When we talk about native folded states, we talk about the state that is actively functional. If it is an enzyme, we say the enzyme will be actively functional, being able to carry out catalysis. If it is a signaling molecule, we we'll actually talk about a protein that is being able to bind to a ligand and transmit an information. Or for example, insulin is actually a signal molecule that actually signals to the system to mobilize and utilize glucose. So here we have the ion exchange chromatography, where the separation is based on the X, the ion, which is if it is a positive charge or a negative charge. So that actually type of chromatography is divided into two, which is the cation exchanger and the ion, an ion exchanger, which depends on the the exchanger you're using for the separation of the protein. We also have size exclusion, which is based separation that is based on the molecular weight molecular weight or the basis of the size of the protein. We also have affinity chromatography which is based on the affinity of the protein or an enzyme to a particular ligand. We also have the high performance liquid chromatography. We also have dialysis, purification table and electrophoresis. Electrophoresis talk about uh, charge to mass ratio. Charge to mass ratio. Dialysis will look at membrane porosity how the protein is able to maybe retain in a particular membrane fold or dialysis chamber. So that way we can actually, for dialysis chamber, usually the word dialysis, we can actually use it to separate smaller molecular weight protein from high molecular weight protein. So this is column chromatography. Uh, the word column, the word column or the word chromatography talks about colors, chrome. What colors? That is why you can see different color bands on this column. The column is just like the tube. The tube is actually made of a of a solid porous matrix, which is actually the stationary phase. Why it actually have a small space at the top where you load your sample, and sometimes it can be connected to a pump to facilitate the migration along the uh, along the column. So we also have the the liquid phase that the protein will migrate with. So the protein begins to migrate based on the interaction with the protein and the solid matrix. So the, high, the heavier molecular weight molecule to the higher uh, light molecular weight molecule migrates in this column. 
So you can see we have protein A, B, and C, which actually eluted at different times. It's actually eluted at, at, at different times and the fraction will be collected based on the weight and based on the migration on the column. So we also have this ion exchange. You can see here the we actually introduce a resins, a polymer bit with negatively charged functional group. That is actually the resins we are talking about here. And resins is negatively charged. So if we have proteins, if we have two proteins, one is highly positive charge and one is highly negative charge. We can use the ion exchange chromatography for such separation. In this case, the, since the resin is made up of negatively charged resins, the positive charged proteins will attract to the, to the beads, will, will cling to the beads because of electrostatic attraction. Why the negatively charged beads will, will, will repel and they will elute faster than the positively charged proteins. You can see protein mixture is added at this top to the column containing the cation exchanger. So it, what we call it a cation exchanger. Note the name. Cation exchanger means you're exchanging for a cation. And the cation is a positive, is a positive charge. So you're exchanging for a cation so the protein is actually the cation here why the the column is actually negatively charged so that it can attract positively charged proteins you can see in the color here we have different okay we have different we have different they have the large net positive charge proteins which will remain more on the beads we have the net positive charge protein, which will migrate further compared to the large negative, I mean, net positive charge proteins. While the net negative charge proteins will start migrating and be eluted from the column. So that's what we call an ion exchange chromatograph. For, for an ion exchanger, the beads will be made up of positively charged resins so that it can attract negatively charged proteins. So yeah, okay, let's look at this question. Let's look at this question. Here we have the, okay, this is the problem, problem number 18, Leninger edition eight, edge, edition eight of Leninger. So here we have predicting the cation exchange elution order. So here we want to know which protein will elute first, second, and third, because we have three proteins here, proteins A, protein B, and protein C. So we're interested in which one will elute faster. So, now suppose a column is filled with a cation exchange resins. A cation exchange resins. That means the resins is filled with negatively charged beads. So that it will attract positively charged proteins. At pH 7.0, in what order would the given peptides elute from the column if each has the same number of residues? have the same number of residues so in that case what we do look at the peptide a peptide b and peptide c if you notice the peptide a has 30 percent alanine 10 percent aspartic acid 10 percent lysine 15 percent serine 25 percent proline and 10 percent cysteine the same goes for b b has isoleucine 25 percent so this tells us the percentage of these amino acids that are found in the protein. So we are going to look at the negatively charged amino acids and the positively charged amino acids. So here we look at the okay okay. So for the first protein A, we have the alanine thirty percent. Aspartic acid 10%, lysine 10%, serine 15%, proline 25%, cysteine 10%. So what we do first, we look at their PI values. Their PI values. Any PI value that is less than 7 will be negatively charged at pH of 7. So you can see here, this is negatively charged, negatively charged, positive negative 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 because they are less than seven so if we add the percentage 
of the negative we have 90 percent negatively charged and we have what 10 percent positively charged at ph 7. so for b we have the same thing 90 percent positively char negatively charged and 10 percent positively charged but for c we have okay we have this is arginine 20 which is positive uh, we have histidine five percent which is positive so that means we will not add the five plus 20 that is 25 that means this peptide c has 25 percent negative and 20 percent 25 i mean 75 percent negative and 20 percent 25 percent positive so that tells you that if you're using a cation exchanger c will loot first because i mean c will loot last sorry c will loot last because c is more positively charged than a and b so c will remain in the column while a and b will continue migrating to be eluted from the column so you can see here based on the above peptide c is the most positively charged peptide it will have the most attraction to the column beat and elute last how do we determine whether the peptide a or b will elute faster thus we need to compare the peptide which have the least positive charge so in order to know the one that will elute faster between a and b we need to compare the isoelectric point now for a the isoelectric point is contributed by lysine is contributed by lysine which is equal to 9.74 for B, uh, the, the, the net charge is contributed by, the positive charge is contributed by arginine and histidine and arginine. So for histidine, we have 7.59 plus 10.76. So divided by 2, you know, we actually talk about getting the isoelectric points. It's dividing both sides you know, by 2 or taking the average of both sides. So we have 9.5. One eight. So you see in this case that the isoelectric point of A, 9.74, is greater than the isoelectric point of histidine and arginine combined, which is 9.18. So that means at, at pH of 7, A will be, A will be more positively charged than B. So A will be more positively charged than B. So that means B will loot first, followed by A, then C will loot last. So the order of migration is B, A, and C. Or for, no, the order of migration will be the first one, which is B will migrate first, followed by A, followed by what? C. So C will migrate last. So that is the answer for the question 18 in Leninger edition 8. So thank you. Please do not forget, do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Click the subscription button below. Like, share and make your comment so that we can actually improve on our next video. Thank you.